I think all people compare themselves to others. It is perhaps one of the most human things you can possibly do. And yet, for artists, it might come all that more naturally. Comparison without emotion really doesn't seem to negatively affect artists, though. It's the emotions, the feeling of being left behind, of being behind, that grabs us by the throat. Art is hard. It always has been. But does it always have to be? In this series, we are going to explore what makes art so hard and how we can maneuver around the obstacles and set ourselves on a better path toward continued creative practice. My name is Zach. I'm an artist and an art teacher. And if you are enjoying these podcasts, please like and subscribe. Let's dive in. So comparison, why do we do it? Why does it mess with us? And what can we do about it? Well, if it is one of these natural things for humans, perhaps one of the more human things we ever do, it's safe to say that it's inherent in our nature. It's something that we do not because we form a conscious decision to do it, but because we can't help but do it. You see this in young kids all the time, but until about third or fourth grade, most of that comparison is not unhealthy in any capacity. You see this on the playground or in kinder first and second grade classrooms where students will look over at what their neighbor is doing, comparing their actions to their neighbors. Some of that is checking to see what they're doing because they're interested, some is them being distracted because they're children. But in a lot of capacities, that's just them comparing what they're doing to what someone else is doing. The key thing though is at that young age, there's not a lot of emotion tied up in it. Most of it is just them checking to see what's happening around them. But this weird thing happens about third or fourth grade, where they start to compare themselves to one another and then evaluate their own self-worth. We learned about this when I was in art education classes at university. One of the things my professor said was, if you go into a second grade classroom or even a third grade classroom at the beginning of the year and ask all the students in that class to raise their hands if they're an artist, Almost all of the students will raise their hand. They all identify it as an artist because they can draw or they can paint. However, if you go into a fourth grade classroom and ask the same question, a fraction, sometimes as small as a 20th of that classroom will raise their hands and declare themselves as being an artist. So what has changed? There's this inherent component in our nature where we compare ourselves to others. And at that age level, the students are able now to look at their peers and evaluate that their skills are greater than or lesser than their peers' skills. And this is where they start to develop some of that understanding of who they are and what they are. Are they still an artist? Well, am I better than the other kids or am I worse than them? If I'm better than them, then I guess I am. And if I'm worse, then perhaps not. And I certainly don't want to throw my hat in with that lot and be the worst out of the batch that considers themselves the artist. So. There seems to be some component of this that is just inherent to being human, that we always have this need and this desire to look around and see what everyone else is doing and then to evaluate ourselves based on that. And outside of the art world, it's not really a bad thing. We also have a desire for improvement. As artists, we're always looking to get better. I've never run into an artist who's just totally content with where they are. I've met artists that have said this, but uh, I've always gotten the, the idea that there's a lot of ego there. There's a lot of pride behind that. And that that rebuttal, that response is simply a shield. It is a barricade so that they don't have to deal with their own feelings and emotions. Now, this isn't to say that you couldn't be content with where you are. What it is to say is that you as an artist, me as an artist, we're not content staying where we are. I think that there will come a day where I will be content with my skills being where they are at that moment, as long as they're continuing to move forward. Am I content with them right now? No, absolutely not. I, I think if they were three times as good, <laughs> as high as they are right now, I probably still wouldn't be content. But there is a level, I think, and there are some very content artists who are happy with where their skills are at that moment and continuing to refine them. So this desire to improve, this desire to get better, makes it almost a necessity to look around and see how everyone else is doing. And it's not always productive, but it is kind of an inherent component to being an artist, whereas the other is just inherent to being human. A lot of artists struggle with perfectionism as well. They've got these boundaries and these ideas that they put on themselves and these standards and expectations that are not always reasonable. 
And sometimes that perfectionism is honed by looking at other artists and comparing to them and their work. This is, of course, not a good idea because you have no idea where everyone else is on that scale, but it's often a reason why comparing to other people is such a common thing for artists, is that perfectionism that might be an innate component, um, albeit kind of a negative one for many artists, has to almost validate itself by looking around and being like, yep, see, you're not good yet. You're not perfect yet. We're not there because look at this guy. This guy can do this. That girl is way better painter than you. So obviously you're not there yet. You better keep going, keep moving. You're not there. Social media, I think, has to be one of our uh, topics here because, oh my goodness, it's just such a prevalent thing nowadays. When I was growing up, you couldn't see other people's art in nearly this way until DeviantArt came out. And that was this magical, weird platform where we could start to see other artists work in places other than books. And I know that might sound very, very weird, but back in the day, that was one of the first formats that we had with the early internet to be able to see what other artists were doing. And it was incredible. It was amazing to see everything that everyone else was capable of doing. But it wasn't quite as saturated back then, and there was still a lot of uh, mediocre art and bad art in conjunction with all of the really, really high-level stuff. So social media now is, is very different. What we see online, especially if you hop on Instagram, if you're listening to this and you pull open Instagram, what you are seeing on there, by and large, is carefully curated material that is sculpted for the public eye. You are not seeing all the sketches, most of the time, you are not seeing all the sketches that led to that project. You're not seeing the years of work that went into it prior. You're not seeing the couple drafts that didn't turn out well. You're not even seeing a bad photo of the good art. You're seeing a carefully crafted, well done, well documented piece of evidence. So social media creates a, an easy format for us to see and then compare ourselves to other artists, but it also gives us this really false window into what we're seeing. It's so easy to hop on there and I'm guilty of this too. I did this just yesterday where I was looking at someone else's work and I had this like flush of horror when it's like, why am I so far behind? I'll never catch up with these people. Fortunately, this particular artist had so much work on there, I could hop on and be like, oh, well this artist has been doing a piece a day, like a fully fleshed out piece a day for at least two years, maybe three years. And immediately I'm able to go, well, geez, if I was putting in two or three hours of drawing and painting time a day, I can't imagine where I'd be. And that kind of realization doesn't always come when you look at other people's work on social media. It makes it so easy to compare. So easy to compare. And what you're comparing is not accurate either. Our culture and our society obviously have impacts. They push on us. You know, if you are trying to be a traditional artist, it's so easy for everyone in your life to kind of throw out some evidence, whether it's tangential or correct in any capacity, about your abilities and how they compare to other people. And you can walk into a gallery and you can see what sells in your area or what seems to sell in your area. So there's the comparisons that just naturally happen in that capacity. And if you live with people or in a community that doesn't respect anime, that doesn't like anything Japanese or cartoony, then you are going to naturally be compared and maybe have a tendency yourself to compare yourself to things that are not even in the realm that you want to work in. So sometimes our societal and cultural uh, tethers can pull us in directions with comparison. It's like taking a bite of a cake you made and being like, ah, this isn't as good as a hamburger I had yesterday. Like they're not supposed to be or trying to be the same thing. And so you have to be careful, uh, but sometimes culture and society can push those comparisons on us. And that's something that we just find ourselves doing. Perhaps one of the biggest reasons why we compare ourselves to other artists though, is that we seek to some degree validation and recognition. We compare ourselves to other people because we want to see if we're growing, we want to see if we're progressing, we want to see where we are in the field. How are we when it comes to everyone else? You know, if you're on a soccer team and your record's not very good, like you're, you're looking for other teams that have a worse record because you want to validate yourself, you want to validate your team and your efforts. And that can be one of the biggest reasons that we pull ourselves into this social media web and start looking at and comparing our work to other people. I would be lying if I if I said that I didn't do this. Sometimes when I'm on Instagram, I'll kind of be happy when I find what I perceive as an artist that is worse than me doing well on there because it's like, oh, see, I, I can do this. I can have a chance. And then I kind of got to like metaphorically bop myself on the head because that's like 
it's not about skill. It's not about, well, it's not about skill alone. It's about so many things. And so many artists are trying to do very specific things and very different things from other artists. And so it's very difficult to just look at an artist and go, yes, definitively, I am better or I am worse. Though we do it with the worse all the time. And sometimes this just comes from a lack of self-confidence that we need that validation, that recognition, because we don't believe in ourselves. We don't believe that we can get there. And so we need to validate some of our uh, movements and our decisions and our choices so that we feel better about our own artistic existence. And the last reason I wanna talk about for why we compare ourselves to others is a really big and really important one. And it's that art is part of our identity. As artists, we tie a lot of our self-worth into being an artist. I don't know that this happens in quite the same capacity with most other professions. Most of my friends that were out of the teaching realm didn't necessarily identify themselves so strongly with what it was they did professionally. But artists are even a step beyond that, where even those of us who don't make art professionally, we still identify as being creatives, as artists. It's a part of who we are. And I don't think there's anything you can do to detach that. I think that's just part of the, the curse or the blessing of being an artist and having the need to create things. It's part of our identity. And so we naturally compare ourselves. We naturally have this inclination to look at other people's work and to validate ourselves, to look at where we stand and to find more that are like us because we're different. This is part of who we are and we can't detach from it. And so sometimes we just find ourselves looking for others that are like us, and that makes it very easy to see their work, compare ourselves, and fall into that same trap that we so often do. So those are some of the reasons why we as artists compare ourselves to other artists and their work. But why does it mess with us so much? It seems like on a surface level, comparing yourself to someone else should be an unemotional thing that we should be able to sit there and be like, yes, this person is better than me and this person is not. And these are facts that are immutable and exist in the universe, but we don't, they mess with us. These feelings just cascade out of nowhere and smack us in the face with our lack of skill in comparison to other people. So why does it mess with us? Well, first of all, I think it messes with us because it's inaccurate most of the time. What we see out there, especially on the internet, has little to no context. Take, for example, the comparison of looking at someone's artwork on Instagram. You are seeing this very carefully curated quantity of work. However frequently it comes up there, all that you see as the viewer is you see that individual piece. Now, let's say that you watch something like what's playing in the background here. You watch me carefully construct this drawing, or this is a drawing in this case, this drawing over the course of several hours. Well, now you have a better understanding of how that process comes together. Your comparison would be more accurate, but you don't know how much I sped this up. Well, I sped it up two times, by the way. I, I find that that's best, but you don't know how, uh, how much the artist sped up their work. You don't know if they sped it up at all. You don't know if there's any cuts in there. You don't know if they took breaks, if this takes place over the course of one day or 50 days, and you have no clue how much pre prep time went into something. Even in this case, you don't know how long I spent thinking about this idea and sculpting it out in my mind, how many thumbnails I had to get to get to this point. So if you were to do your homework and come up with all the ideas and try to figure out exactly how much time this took so you had an accurate comparison, you still wouldn't have all the pieces. Now, of these two scenarios, this would be the better one. And an even better case might be if you're working in class alongside another student and you can watch them get the project work through their thumbnails and their sketches, execute the project, and if they only worked on it during class time, you will have a pretty good understanding of the comparison between you and them. But even then, you really don't know, unless you live with them. You don't get to see how often they draw, how much they sketch, how many times they paint, and you just don't know. Our comparisons of ourselves to other artists are just never going to be accurate because we understand almost all the facets in ourselves, and we understand so few of the facets with everyone else. So part of the reason, and maybe one of the biggest reasons why comparing ourselves to other people, other artists, is that we're just inaccurate. Our data is pretty complete for ourselves. We can sit there and be like, oh my goodness, my painting is nowhere near as good as that person's painting, but you don't know how long that painting took them. 
Let's just eliminate all the other components. You don't know how long the painting took them. Most of my oil paintings, for example, are like four to six hour things. But I know, and I have friends that spend 20 or 30 hours on a painting. But you can't always tell when you look at it. You don't know how fast they put it together. You don't know if they sat there for a minute in between strokes sometimes, trying to figure out exactly where that next brush stroke needs to be. So our information is inaccurate when we try to compare ourselves to others. And this is one of the reasons why it messes with us so much, because we assume and we don't have the right information to do so. Another reason that comparison can mess with us so much is it can make us feel like we're standing still while everyone else grows. And it makes it easier to throw in the towel. Again, because we don't have an accurate understanding of what's actually happening with all these other artists, it can make it seem like our progress is slow in comparison, and it can make it easy to quit. It can make it easy to just have this desire to just throw in the towel and be done with art altogether. And that's terrible. Most of us got into art not to make money or because we had some desire to, to have everybody love us. It's because we wanted to create things. We wanted to bring new things into existence, or we just like playing with the media. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with wherever anybody else is and how fast they're growing, does it? It has something to do with us, with us as individuals. And so it can make us feel like everyone else is moving at a different pace, when again, we just don't know. And all of this comparison actually just slows down your individual progress because you're focusing on things that don't matter. Now, this is the same for me as well. We as artists do this, but when we hyper-focus on the fact that we're not as good as another artist, that we're not moving as quickly as they are. It slows us down. It slows us down because it messes with our emotions. It makes it like harder to actually work in that moment. But also, we're focused on things that aren't important. If we can evaluate where we are, where our skills are, what we want to improve, that's all we need to focus on. We don't need to focus on whether somebody else already has that skill set. It can be a death trap. It can be so easy and we can waste so much time thinking about and maybe even giving into self-pity because we're not as far along as other people. But it just doesn't matter. It'll sit there and it'll hold you in that space and you'll feel sorry for yourself and no progress will be made. And this comparison will just eat away at what could be time that is allocated toward actually improving and honing your craft. Don't do it. Another thing that's really important here that has to be discussed is that it can undermine your self-worth as an artist. Over comparing yourself to other people pulls you out of the creative space and it starts putting you in a place where your only validation as an artist is if your skill is comparable to other artists. And that's, again, not why we got into this. Your self-worth as an artist is complicated and tied into so many different aspects. The ability for you to say what you want to say with your art, what your art communicates to other people. If you have personal difficulties or traumas that you work out through it, maybe it's therapeutic for you. There are so many aspects of your self-worth as an artist that are tied up in this. And comparing yourself to other artists only tangles it up more and makes it more complicated and not in a beneficial way. So be careful, be careful not to undermine your self-worth by over comparing yourself to the work of other artists. It's creatively stifling as well. And it's linked to our emotions, right? If you feel down, like your art isn't moving anywhere, you aren't as good as everybody else, you know, in fact, maybe you'll never be able to be a, a real artist. Like how could you possibly sit down and make something creative? You have to be that special, weird breed of person that turns that into fuel and aggression to move forward, but that isn't most of us. Our creativity is often linked to our emotional state, and if we're in a place where we feel crappy about our art because we're comparing ourselves time and time again to other people, then we're stifling what got us into this in the first place. In that same train of thought, it rips the joy out of the art making process. Comparison doesn't really do anything beneficial for us. It puts us in a bad place, it gives us inaccurate information about our standing, and our standing doesn't matter. So it rips the joy out of art making. And for 95% of us, the joy of making and creating things is what got, it, got us into it in the first place. All right, so how do we fight this? So let's break this into how to prevent comparison in the first place, and then how to deal with the potentially negative side effects when you inevitably compare yourself because, hey, we're human. 
So preventing comparison, here's the first thing. Set some solid goals. If you have things to compare yourself against that you have created, then you're gonna be less prone to compare yourself to other artists. If you have solid goals for where you wanna go with your artwork, then you know exactly which direction you should be going. You can look at where your artwork currently is, you can look where it wants to be, and you can start moving towards that. That's specific, it's particular to you as an artist, and it's actually valuable. It's valuable for you to be able to do that because you can evaluate if you're making progress or not. And when you do find other artists and look at their work in this manner of mindset, you're actually just seeing which tidbits of their work can you pull and can be beneficial to you. This is a better way to do this, and it's built just for you as the individual. Next, limit your social media time. This can be a super beneficial thing. And I've actually seen a couple ways that I think this is well managed. Mark Brené talks about this a little bit in some of his work, and what he talked about is making sure that you set time aside specifically to consume art. But the goal then is not to mindlessly surf through Instagram. The goal is to look for inspiration, to see things that you can run into. And I've thought about this a little bit more, and I think this is another way to look at this. Look at all the other artwork through a lens of gratitude. So try to look at the other artwork and, and be thankful for what you get to see, thankful for the things that you can glean from that work. But if this is difficult for you, and maybe just for everyone in general, limit your social media time. Maybe only allow yourself to sit down for five minutes a day or 15 minutes a day to look through things like Instagram. Set a timer on your phone when you sit down. I think really what this comes down to though is understanding and managing your social media time. Don't let it be mindless. Make sure that it's got purpose. If you had a tough day at work or you're on your break or whatever and you need a few minutes to just recalibrate, that's fine, but make sure that's what you're doing and it's not just mindless. Because if it's mindless and it's sitting at home and you have the ability to be doing other things, you could be trying. Here's another one. Focus on your growth rather than just execution of final pieces. So yes, I guess this is basically like the journey as opposed to the destination, but I'm not sure there is a destination with art. Like we've got little destinations along the path and those are called projects. Those are the things that we, that we finish and we post, but the journey is all consuming. It never stops, it always keeps going. And so if you can find a way to enjoy that journey, enjoy just the progress, then goodness, you're gonna be so much better off. Now I do this when I'm sketching. I try to sit down for you know a little bit of time sketching every day, preferably an hour, I don't always get it. But I try to make sure that like at least one thing in there was enjoyable or was exciting. You know, and sometimes that's I drew something from memory and it was good. I liked it. And sometimes if I'm if I'm working for 20, 30, 40 minutes and I haven't done anything yet that's been enjoyable, I'll either pull up something that I know I can succeed at and work on that, or I'll just draw something that's a little bit lower stress. So I have something out of that time that, that's beneficial to me, something out of that time that's a little bit more fun. And that's been hard for me. I have a tendency to focus very much on just what the finished products are, or I hyper-focus on practicing and don't do any projects, both of which are bad. But if you have a tendency to over-focus on comparing yourself to others, then working on enjoying the journey is just going to gut some of that desire and that necessity to compare yourself to others because you're not seeing their journey. You're seeing these destinations along that path. This is actually maybe on your social media accounts, start following people who show like in progress stuff. Start following people who show pages from their sketchbooks because those things can be really cool and really helpful. And they're not usually as refined and there's usually little mistakes and things that you can find in there. So they actually feel human instead of like these godlike entities that are just gods and deities of art, which is not very beneficial for most of us. For most of us. Celebrate the things that are unique to your art. So if you have a style specifically, or if there's some quirk about what you do, focus on that because that unique little component that you bring to the table is different and that's you. And that beautiful little unique thing is going to just, it's gonna make other people happy and it's something that you can hold on to. And it's something that can't really be compared. Comparing artistic styles from one artist to another is, I don't know, pointless? It's silly at the very least. So focus on the little things that you do differently, the unique qualities of your art. Of course, as I'm saying this, I'm also thinking about like, well, what are the unique parts of my art? And I think a lot of it is like, I try to do things like what you're seeing in the background here, where it's this fantasy story thing that's kind of being played out and told out, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm curious too. So 
I would love for you guys to share in the comments down below, what, like what are the unique characteristics of your art or the quirks of your art that you or other people like and have commented on in the past? So here's the last one I'm gonna look at today on preventing comparison in the first place is get off of the platforms that allow you to compare yourself to others. So get off your digital stuff for a little bit each week. Take some time and focus on spending your art time in your sketchbook or just get outside, go for a walk, go look at whatever's happening with the weather and with the seasonal changes wherever you are. Go sit and have your lunch break out in the grass and leave your phone at your desk. I know this seems a little trite, but getting out of whatever your normal is. And for most of us, our normal is spending our whole day attached in some capacity to our digital devices. If you can get away from that, if you can just give yourself a little scene change, it does wonderful, wonderful things for your brain and wonderful things for your soul. And especially if you find yourself comparing yourself to other artists all the time, if you detach yourself from the platforms that even allow you to do that, where it's just not an option, your mind's gonna go different places. You're gonna think about different things. And hopefully you can take that time and focus on gratitude and being thankful for your life and for all these unique and interesting things in it. But also if you're working on your artwork, sometimes it's great to sit down and listen to a YouTube video like this one while you're drawing or painting. And sometimes it's good to just listen to some music or to listen to nothing and just be alone with your own thoughts. All right, let's close this out with this section that is obviously purposeless because we're never going to accidentally compare ourselves to other people's artwork ever again. But let's just say that, you know, perchance maybe accidentally we do compare ourselves to some other artist at some point. Here are some ways to manage those feelings, the things that hit us sideways when we do that. First of all, acknowledge how you feel. Don't ignore it. Your feelings are valid and you have to hold on to them and recognize them and then let them go. Feeling upset or feeling left behind because all these other artists are so miraculous and you're just so not sucks. And I don't know that there's a better, prettier way to say that. It's a hard place to be and we've all been there and some of us are there right now. So hold on to that feeling, acknowledge it. Allow yourself to feel that emotion for a moment but don't hold on to it forever. Realize that that emotion is just you being sad that you haven't moved forward yet. Acknowledge that, let it go, and figure out what you have to do to start moving forward. And next, refocus yourself on your goals. So once you've let those feelings kind of slide out of your hands, refocus yourself on the goals that are important to you. What do you really want to do? What specifically do you want to get better at? And go back to those things. And this is an excellent strategy, like I mentioned before, on just avoiding the comparison in the first place, is understand specifically what it is you want to do, where you want to grow. So even if you are comparing yourself to other people, it's in a very particular niche and you know exactly what you want to do to get better. Be gracious with yourself. This comes up a lot in my videos and I think it's just very important in general, especially for artists. We are so hard on ourselves. I saw this in the classroom so much where every single student thought their work was terrible and every other student's work in the classroom was amazing. So try to put yourself in the other people's shoes and realize that when people tell you your work is good or they like it, they're not lying to you. They have almost nothing to gain and flattery is pretty much pointless with artists. So be gracious with yourself. You're only human. This is a very long road. It's tough and you've got to be kind to yourself you often have to be your best advocate. It's great if you've got other people in your life who love you and take care of you and focus on redirecting all of your stress and anxiety about your artwork. But at the end of the day, you've got to learn how to be that for yourself as well. You've got to be able to count on yourself to be kind and gracious to you as the artist on your progress and how long this journey is going to take. You are amazing. You are a wonderful creature who gets to create things, who brings the beautiful things to the world. If the world didn't have artists, this world would be so boring. And most of the stuff that we enjoy in our day-to-day -day life would simply not exist. And you are a part of that. You are a part of the system that creates beautiful things for the sake of beauty. Thank you. Now be gracious with yourself and kind to yourself as well. And let's keep moving. And sometimes you gotta step away from your medium for a little while. Now I didn't say step away from your art. 
But if your oil painting is giving you a hard time, if your digital drawing is giving you a hard time, step away from that. Stay in the arts, but step away from whatever it is that's hassling you. You've compared yourself to other digital artists and you are just so slow. We'll shift back to something a little bit more comfortable. This is probably what I do the most. And when I was setting out my outline for this, I didn't really think of it, but this is probably what I do the most. When oil painting frustrates me, I move over to gouache. And when digital art frustrates me, I move back to working with pens because they're really comfortable for me. And sometimes if I stay in something that's going to just make me feel like a failure who can't keep up with anyone, if I go back to something that's just joy, then I stay in it and I don't take a break. And every break I take is just another day or another week that I'm behind where I want to be. And maybe that's what we also should focus on is it's not about being behind other artists. It's about where you want to be. We all want to improve. And so if you are able to detach from that and just be kind to yourself, take a break from things that you need when you need to, but always try to keep creating, keep brainstorming, keep pushing, you're going to benefit from that. We all know better than to compare ourselves to other artists in a negative way, but I'm not sure any of us can actually stave off this temptation. Everyone, no matter how good, has someone better than them in their own eyes. So try to make use of that tendency, avoid it where possible, and channel it in positive ways where necessary. Thanks for listening. I hope this has been helpful, and I would love to hear from y'all about how you avoid comparing yourself to other artists, and if you struggle with this particular issue. Do you have any strategies that you use to center yourself when you've compared yourself too much to someone else? I'd love to hear about them in the comments down below. Keep creating, keep making, and have a good one, y'all. See you soon.